The Poison Trap Jewel is actually the best druid built in game to face a new content avatar of Seer. Thanks to the aspect of the Blurred Beast and the mechanic double dipping, we will apply most of our damage aspects two times and this is the reason for the huge damage we can deal with the Poison Trap Jewel. Also the Tears of Blood Cleave gets also double dipped and will be applied two times. This is a crazy damage multiplier for our Poison Shred Druid. For this build I completely left out any companions and the Poison Creeper too. For this build you will need the Anna's Visage, otherwise you cannot apply the Poison Block. If you don't have Anna's Visage yet but still want to play Poison Shred, you can go for my other two builds that play with Poison Creeper. As I said in my last video, the content creator As of Spades is a fan of the original meta build. The props to As of Spades is a really great druid Diablo 4 content creator and I will link his video in the description again. I left out Poison Creeper because it takes up too much slots to maintain it. And I'm also testing out a Butcher's Carver with the Taro Vampiric power. The Butcher's Carver adds a nice additional card control effect and will crit for 100% if the enemy is feared. If you don't want to take Butcher's Carver, there will also be a version in my Chablana without a unit. Hey guys, what's up England with another Diablo 4 Druid build guide. For the such, we will have 12.6 armor as you can get this to 30,000 armor to build armor. Cap we also have 21,000 life with our mod. We have 24.000 life and with Gillian's Brew we'll have around 28% thousand life so it's really nice. We have multiple layers of damage reduction and we'll have a run of 100% more attack speed. So let's go with our gear. As I said, and last Visage, it has everything we want as a poison shred druid and the lucky chance is the really uh, important one. But also the life seed as it scales with our damage and the attack speed is also nice. So for the armor, I got the aspect of the disobedience, but if I will find another armor with Armor while in werewolf form, I will switch out my aspect of disobedience and will change it with the aspect of my because we weave in a basic attack so we get our maul and our life from our passive skill. So if you have an amulet with armor while in werewolf form, take the aspect of might, otherwise go with the aspect of disobedience as we reach the armor cap with it. Additionally, go for tall armor, max life, damage reduction and damage reduction from close or poised enemies. For the next, the cloths. Go with the aspect of the elements. You can go with the lowest aspect rank because we are snapshotting the aspect. I will explain to you later in the last part of my video. So make sure to stay till the end of the video so you will understand the snapshotting mechanic. And with the affixes, go with attack speed, critical strike chance, like hit chance, and go with intelligence if you need more int for your max res. As you see, I need some more points in int because I finished my build, I think, yesterday in my chairman stream, and I will need to go for more int. But if you're on max res, go for willpower. You don't need ranks of shred because shred won't benefit our aspect of the blood beast. So far, the pants go for a vigorous aspect as it provides you a nice 15% damage reduction in the werewolf form. Also go for total armor, damage reduction from poison enemies, damage reduction while fortified or damage reduction from poison enemies. Or channel damage reduction, just any damage reduction type. And at the moment I'm testing out the damage reduction while injured. I'm not that sure yet if I want to dodge it as I want to always stay on max life. It can be helpful on the blood seekers when you go for low life. So for our boots, we have flicker step because it is another cornerstone of our build. Go for a max damage reduction from close enemies affix and a max movement speed affix. So for our amulet, go with the aspect of the blood beast with a max value and also go with total armor, ranks of the man and passive, total armor value in werewolf form and damage reduction from close or poison enemies or whatever damage reduction type you can find. Our first thing, we got the Iron Dust, next to the Will. It is our other cornerstone, so we can pull our enemies together. And here, just go for the highest amount of willpower you can get. High lucky chance, damage to close enemies, and the effect is also nice to it with a high value. For our other ring, we got the accelerating aspect, and this is our second snapshot. As you see, I won't go for the starlight aspect, as I don't have room for it, so we will get our spirit from our Pargon, but as I will show you 
Later, for the affixes go with crit strike chance, maximum life, damage to close enemies, and lucky hit chance. Oh, and another interesting and experimental part of this build is the Butcher's Cleaver. When you critical strike, you will 100% fear the enemies and you will slow them. Okay, that's nice, but that's not so good that you will ditch another aspect or two hand them. But what I'm testing out at the moment is with the terror power. Because you will also slow enemies if you will get stuck and you will get stuck really often by the Bloodseeker. So it works really nice for crowd control and also you are guaranteed to critical strike enemies who are feared. This is the nice part. So with your critical strikes you will always fear the mobs and when they are feared they are always guaranteed to, to critical strike. So you can just go ham when you see the Bloodseekers are running around when they are fear and you can pull out large damage numbers and you can also go for a normal aspect and then go for the aspect that you will get more core skill damage and with another power so for our fan go with the storm class aspect with a max roll and also for our fixes go for critical strike chance maximum item power and cooldown reduction and damage reduction from poison enemies and damage reduction while you're fortified for the games, go for the Rubin as it will provide you with a maximum life. For the armor parts, for your necklace and your rings, just go that you got your max res. And for your weapon and the off hand, go for the emerald for more critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. For vampiric powers, we got ravenous. So we will stack our attack speed as high as we can and try to block your remnants block from your shred and not from your metamorphosis as you will get minus 100% movement speed. As you don't know what it is, you can check out my video and yeah, I will explain in this video why you shouldn't block the remnants with your metamorphosis. And for the next go with Terror as I explained earlier. And Flowing Veins is another nice part for another damage over time source and more damage for our aspect of the Blurred Bees. Also go for Prey on the Weak so we will make our enemies vulnerable when they are affected by a Vampiric Curse and this will be provided through our Metamorphosis as we will get the enemies to be affected by a Vampiric Curse after we dash through them. And this is a tooltip bug, it is actually 2.5 seconds unstoppable. So for the spirit boons, go for the wariness and here for the eagle go for iron feather and also sky talents or swooping attacks. Also go for the energize one. So for the last one the snake go for masochistic so you have a nice addition life proc. Next on to our skill tree we'll go for more as it will proc our war sign strength. I will come to this sometimes later and also go for the wild maul so you will weave in your maul every 3 to 4 seconds. Here you will go for one rank of shred because ranks of shred are the only one part that don't benefit your aspect of the blood bees. Also go for the primal shred and additionally go one point into heart of the wild so you can go for three points in wild impulses for more core skill damage. Also take three points in predatory instinct for more crit chance. Two points in here so you have more movement speed and three points for iron fur. So we'll have 9% damage reduction while in werewolf form. As we'll often switch to more debilitating raw to a werewolf form, we have the damage reduction almost 100%. With our defensive skills, go for the max rank of cyclone armor as it provides us maximum ranks of non-physical damage reduction. Also go for the preserving cyclone armor. We will get a nice additional damage reduction of 30% every 10 seconds. Go for one point in blood hole as one point in inner blood hole as we need this for our spirit generation. So we can always use shred uses whenever you're low on health or you're low on spirit. And for the last defensive part, use debilitating roar with one point and one point into preserving debilitating roar. And it will provide it will provide a nice slow to your enemy and another nice source of fortify. Also go for a three point in essential fortitude and also go for three points in vigilance. And also we will go for a three point in clarity in our companion skills as it provides us another nice bonus of our spirit generation as we often transfer our form. 
and follow up skills go with a nice combo of neurotoxin one point toxic loss so we can trigger our envenom and it is 60 percent multiplicative damage all the ultimate skills go for petrify acid gives us really high amounts of crit strike damage and also it pulls our enemies together and go for supreme petrify so we get a nice 25 spirit resource back once i take this combo three points into a quick shift Height and senses and natural fortitude, you will get damage, more damage reduction, and more fortify as we often constantly switch our form. And for the last part, ocean strength, it will grant us additional maximum of 20% life for three seconds. And after we switch out of our wearable form, and 25% damage while we're healthy. And this will also double dip, so it is really nice. So this is the reason why you weave in a mall every three to four seconds. So we'll have another nice of 6,000 max life. For the Polygon board, the original one is from Ace of Spades. I modified it for another prop for Ace of Spades. And I also will provide you the chart line in the description. For the first board, go with Territorial Yard as it gives you a nice 10% damage reduction against close enemies. Also for Impel and here all the max life and damage nodes and you can spec out of the resistance nodes if you don't need it. For the second board go for high demand. It is, it is really important that you will always keep your blood seekers together so they will be affected by the 45% increase in damage. Also here you will socket in your tears of blood. It is I think the second best Pagon board for your tears of blood. For the next board go with the constricted tendrils. And you will go for the Fang and Claw as it will provide you bonus to all magic nodes. So you will get a nice maximum life and also maximum life from the rare node. With the next board, go with for Ancestral Guidance as we always get the 30% increased damage. And also go for Checker. It will provide longer uptime of our poison damage effects. It increases our window of our aspect of the Blurred Beast Block and also here can spec out the resistance elements if you don't need them and for the next board go with the thunder strike as you will get another nice damage reduction from vulnerable enemies and also go for the keeper cliff as it will provide another double dipping multiplicative damage bonus and for the last board go with the last for carnage as we will get our Nice quick strike with werewolves skill set restores to spill. So it is really important because it is our main resource generation part. And go for the werewolf cleave. It is another form of our damage reduction. So for the last part now, I will show you the snapshotting. Before you zone in into the Avatar of Seer, make sure you will first equip your max aspect of element on a two-hander and after that is equip your gloves with the aspect of the elements because it always snapshots the first aspect that you equipped and then zone in into the avatar of seer and then you snapshotted your aspect of the elements with the two-handed style and after that take out your accelerating ring switch out to the other two-handed x or any two-handed weapon is with a max roll of the accelerating aspect and then take back the accelerating aspect on your ring and then switch out your weapons as you will see in a short time we will get an attack speed of 50 percent so it works and so you will have a really nice attack speed for the last part, I will show you a quick introduction of the rotor. I will also do this another video to explain it in details. Before the Bloodseeker spawn, just go for one more as you will get your maximum life. Then cast Cyclone Armor as you will get the damage reduction. And after they spawn, go for the Petrify and then dash through and then apply your Vampire Curse effect and then dash in and out as you will deal really high amounts of damage and if one of the blood seekers are feared just go ham on him and for everything on him you can i hope i could show a really nice build as i said my other two builds you can also check them out as you don't need a nice research for them but i think this build will be the best to push high into the avatar of seer and you can also write in the comments if you have further questions or what Avatar of Seer tier you've done. As I've recorded a video, I have 
done a tier 14 with a POB 19 cliff and I will push further with this. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe as it will greatly boost my channel and we'll see us in a, on the next video. Bye!